Let's turn our focus now to the war in Ukraine as Russian forces shelled a railway station in the city of Kherson just as trains were set to evacuate residents. One policeman was killed and four other people injured. Kherson was captured by Russian forces in the first days of the February 2022 invasion but retaken by Ukrainian forces a little more than a year ago. It's under constant attack from Russian forces entrenched in new positions on the east bank of the Dnipro River, with shelling very heavy in recent days. Video posted on social media showed debris and shattered building materials in different areas of the station. Ukrainian railway said evacuees were taken from the station by bus northwest to the town of Mykolaiv, which has been subject to fewer Russian attacks. Delayed trains were rescheduled. The VOA's Anna Chernikova joins us now from Kyiv. Anna, great to see you again today. Uh, good evening. Yeah, so we know Ukrainians want peace more than anything, having bore the brunt of this war. But were people able to find some Christmas spirit over the weekend? Well, people were trying to, at least. Uh, of course, some people had more chance to do so, some people had less. Uh, so most of Ukrainians, uh, at least uh, as th those people who I talked to and in general what we are hearing from different parts of the country, uh, well, they were trying to create at least certain Christmas miracle, mi miracle for children, of course, uh, just to keep this, uh, you know, Christmas spirit for them uh, despite the war. And also, of course, Ukrainians were trying to be with the, with their families uh, as much as it was possible, uh, especially those who had their loved ones uh, next to them. But uh, definitely, a lot of people, unfortunately, uh, lost their either home or loved ones so it was a very different christmas for them because of that uh, and um, also we have footage also, uh, as well from the uh, from the front line and ukrainian soldiers also managed to create certain uh, well a little bit of christmas spirit for themselves uh, even despite the fact that they were uh, located just um, at the point zero basically at the very front line uh, and it has been you know, a hard few weeks for the Ukrainian military, Anna, as it seems Russian attacks seems to have, you know, intensified as we move gradually to two years uh, since the war began. How is President Volodymyr Zelensky's resolve to continue to push back against a continuing Russian invasion? Uh, well, uh, Ukrainian officials, including President Zelensky, of course, and he is probably the main speaker for that. Uh, well, um, everyone is encouraging Ukrainian society and um, well, and explaining that Ukrainian society has to remain united in order to survive. This is the most, uh, I guess, this is the main message from all Ukrainian officials that uh, Ukraine. It's not. Uh, even about the victory in the war uh, as much uh, as it is about the survival of the country, of the nation. So uh, President Zelensky, uh, in his uh, latest speech, uh, Christmas speech, he uh, mentioned that as well, that uh, it is a tough period right now for Ukraine, That, uh, but that the light of Christmas uh, will definitely bring the light um, also in the lives of Ukrainians. Uh, uh, but if we are talking more uh, precisely about the facts and about the certain actions, uh, Ukrainian president uh, is getting Ukrainian society ready for new mobilization uh, wave and a new, and even not only the wave of mobilization, but also the new rules that should be uh, that, that should be voted in the parliament. So the new uh, bill is uh, already in the parliament and is already discussed within the society. And, and within the parliament uh, members uh, in order to Mm, well, in, in order to improve the mobilization stra strategy in Ukraine in general, and uh, as uh, also uh, the commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian Arm Armed Forces, Valery Zaluzhny, mentioned yesterday in his press conference, during his press conference, that uh, the most important now for Ukraine is a uh, new mobilization strategy for the next year, as well as technological um, technological development of the, um, of the army. And this is probably, these are two main 
um, tasks for Ukrainian government and for Ukrainian military for the next year. And, uh, well, uh, the most important for the society from President Zelensky's speeches to remain united. Right. And uh, the President Zelensky is always full of, you know, reassurances to the people and encouragement that, you know, that we should trudge on and, you know, continue in this light. And that has been uh, his message all along, you know, telling people that we will get through this. Uh, but do you see any waning confidence uh, in the people? Are there any signs of war fatigue? Well, definitely there are signs of war fatigue. Uh, I can say that uh, people, of course, well, people are tired, of course. Uh, people are tired to hear uh, about, uh, about uh, you know, young Ukrainians dying every day. People are tired to hear about uh, civilians losing their homes, uh, about uh, people that have to move within the country or even outside the country. Um, people are tired to read every morning, uh, to start their morning with uh, with a report on the latest shelling, on the latest uh, devastation, uh, damage and, uh, you know, and um, death roll and so on and so forth. But uh, at the same time, Ukrainians, as I already mentioned, uh, about the survival in this war, Ukrainians understand that it's about their own survival and uh, they do not have the right to be tired because especially those who are not at the battlefield uh, because, well, uh, they have to be uh, a strong support for those at the battlefield. And this is, I think, that general uh, mood uh, within the country. So despite this fatigue, which is definitely present because, well, it's almost two complete years of full-scale invasion and, uh, well, every... Uh, every city in this country uh, is suffering. So you cannot say that uh, there is any safe pla a any place which is completely safe. No, this is not the case. And uh, of course, people, well, people are tired of the situation, but uh, it doesn't mean that people are, but, but again, it, it's not about tiredness of the, you know, of, 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 of the um, need of being united and uh, support, uh, support the, the army, because this is, well, the only way for Ukrainians, at least this is how they see it. And, and right, let's talk now, Anna, about the attack, you know, at this train station in Kherson. Why do you think this may have been a target for the Russian forces? Uh, well, um, we can see that the city of Kherson, si since it was liberated by Ukrainian soldiers um, last year, it was one of the main targets in the south, uh, at the south front line, because uh, the city remains uh, at the artillery distance for Russian forces. And, uh, um, well, there is, you know, there are a lot of expert opinions on that, but uh, definitely one of those is uh, that, well, Russian forces are just uh, trying to make sure that uh, if they're not controlling this territory, then they will make the life impossible in uh, this territory. Uh, also, um, well, at certain point, uh, it was one of the biggest um, uh, one of the biggest uh, losses of the Russian forces last year, and uh, definitely it was not a, a very happy news for Russian forces. So it might be also the reason why. Uh, uh, such intensified um, attacks are con uh, continued because for all this time since liberation, uh, the city of Kherson unfortunately is under very heavy uh, shelling. And yesterday, particularly the news in the morning, it was the news about uh, about uh, that Ukrainian forces managed to destroy one of the uh, Russian amphibious ship uh, in the waters of Crimea. And uh, right after that news, it was also confirmed by the Russian uh, Russian uh, officials. And after that, uh, this attack happened. So, well, we can just guess if it's if it has any connection or not. Uh, but I should say that it's not the the first attack uh, on the train station in Kherson. And uh, even uh, previous attacks uh, were also happening uh, while uh, evacuation trains were. Um, Present uh, on the on the territory of uh, uh, of the train st of the railway station, uh, but uh, I guess this one, the latest one, uh, is uh, one of the worst because the damage is uh, very serious. Uh, and uh, give us an update on the situation in other parts of Ukraine today. 
Uh, well, the situation uh, inter at the front lines remain extremely difficult as it was. Uh, front line itself is not changing uh, as it did not for the past months. But uh, we should understand that uh, the eastern front line and southern front line uh, are the hottest spots at this point, and uh, particularly, especially um, the at the eastern front line, we are looking at the city of Marienka and city of Abdivka, uh, and one of the updates uh, from that area, and it was confirmed by the Ukrainian officials that uh, it looks like that the city of Marienka. Uh, will be, uh, well, is almost completely under Russian control. Ukrainian forces remain in the defense lines, but um, also another fact is that the city of Mar Marinka is basically completely destroyed by the Russian shelling and basically, as um, as Valery Zaluzhny, uh, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, uh, he confirmed that if it will be a need to completely uh, get out of Marienka uh, in order to save lives of Ukrainian soldiers, Ukrainian army will do so. So at this point, uh, we can say that uh, Ukraine, well, we, we can just make a uh, uh, a conclusion that Ukrainian forces remain in there, but most of the city is under Rus apparently is under Russian control, according to the latest reports. Uh, but again, uh, in general, the front line remains unchanged for the past months. Thanks again, Anna, and please do stay safe. Thank you.